Sewing with fleece can be a lot of fun and there are so many fun things that you can make with it, but there are a few things that you might want to know that will make your sewing experience with fleece a little easier. I'm Jan Hal, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you my top 10 tips for sewing and working with this stretchy, cozy fabric. Let's get started. The first tip that we're going to go over is how to tell the difference between the right and the wrong side of the fabric. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, like on printed fleece, the underside will be less vibrant, but still it's kind of hard to tell. And especially on one color fleece pieces, it can be really tricky, especially when you're sewing up a project and you're trying to put right sides together, you'll want to know how to check for that. This side is where they'll cut it when you get the yardage that you need. And this side is a manufactured edge called the selvage edge. If you take this, the non selvage edge, the cut edge, and pull it, it will curl to the wrong side. See that? So just think of stretching on the stretchy side and then it will show you which is the wrong side. The second tip and what I love about sewing on fleece is that the fabric does not fray. That means that you don't have to finish the edges. When you cut this any side, any way, and you sew up your project, those edges are not going to fray. So you don't have to finish the edges and it's quite nice. When you sew on fleece fabric, you wanna make sure that you're using the correct needle and the correct size. You can get away with using a universal needle and, and honestly, that's what I use most. You can use a universal needle that is 80 or 90 in size. And if you want more tips on needle sizes, you can download a free printable that shows you all the needle characteristics and what you need to use. You can also use a jersey needle. You just want to use a ballpoint type needle and I recommend 80, 90 size. That will keep the needle from putting holes in your fabric. And I do recommend using a polyester thread. Tip number four, fleece fabric does have a nap to it. Now and the nap means the direction that the fibers are going, the fluff or fibers of the fabric all go the same way. So if I were to some things like corduroy or it's more obvious, but fleece also has that. So if I were to cut out a bunch of pieces and not worry about the nap and they were both going different directions, it almost, it's going to look funky and weird because it might even look like it's a different color because of the, of the nap. So I'm going to show you on this piece of fleece and these pieces for a slipper pattern. Now this particular pattern says to put it on the stretch, which we know what that is. So the stretch is there. And if I needed to cut out multiples of this, I wouldn't want to flip the, the pattern so that the top goes this way because the nap go, runs on the grain. This is the top of the slipper. I want to make sure that I'm not putting it on like this. And you're going to be tempted to save fabric, especially on pieces like this, if you have to cut up multiples, is to flip that pattern over to save fabric. Don't do it. If I have to cut out multiples, I can either just put it like this or you could flip it like this. But don't flip it like this because it will affect the look of your final project. Tip number five is using the correct sewing machine settings and stitch. When you're sewing with fleece fabric and you're sewing on something, an item that's not going to get stretched, you can get away with using just a regular straight stitch and you will want to increase that length to a three and a half or even a four when top stitching. But if you, if you're sewing a project that has any stretch at all to it, you will want to sew using this lightning bolt stitch, or if your machine doesn't have that lightning bolt stitch, just use a regular zigzag stitch, adjust the width to a one and a half. So it's a very narrow zigzag stitch. I recommend one and a half and the length to be like 1.4 or even shorter, maybe a one. 
I do recommend you try out your stitches before you start sewing your projects just to make sure sometimes the fleece is a little bit different and you'll want to make sure that you're using that zigzag or lightning bolt stitch on anything that's going to stretch on your project because if you don't when it is stretched that seam will pop and break and you don't want that leaving holes in your seam if you have a serger by all means use it on fleece it makes the job so much faster and it gives you a stretch stitch and gives you a finished edge when you're sewing something like this fleece ear that's going to go inside a bunny or something or a bear you don't have to use that lightning bolt stitch because this ear is not going to get stretched so i've just used a regular straight stitch on that it goes makes the project go a lot faster now that lightning bolt stitch will take a little bit more time and this is what it looks like and you can see that it stretches with the fabric when i stretch it now i sewed a portion a small portion just using a straight stitch and i want you to see what happens when i pull it did you hear that popping that is it didn't stretch with my fabric oh and there's that hole so really important if you take the time to make something with fleece and it has a stretch to it like around a hat or something that's going to get stretched you do not want to end up with holes in your seam so another thing that you can do and i do recommend is lowering the presser foot tension if your machine has that adjustment tip number six use long pins and use lots of them especially when you're sewing around curves or over lots of layers of fabric if you use little short pins they sometimes can get lost especially like blankets or something for children you don't want those little pins to get hidden in the the fluff of the fleece so i like i like these long flower pins they're really long they're thin and i can use multiples of them and you can also use this type of pin they're pretty long but you don't want to use these little babies like this tip number seven is when you're working with fleece and several layers of fabric it can get kind of bulky and things are going to shift and sometimes it's not a pretty sight so when you're making projects i'm just going to demonstrate with this say i'm adding this is an ear it's two layers and you have a pleat in the ear which is now four layers and then you have to sew it between here which is another two layers it can get pretty bulky let me show you some really cool tips that will help you get a good seam and even stitches so i'm using these long pins really important on something like this and i'm going to use a lot of pins so if you are adding something like an ear or something let it extend out past the, the main fabric so that you make sure you're catching it let's go to the sewing machine and let me show you some tips on how to get that nice even seam now another thing i want to mention is if i were just to sew this the back fabric tends to shift sometimes it won't even catch it so you want to make sure when you finished your seam that you check both sides to make sure that that back side got caught in the seam allowance now if it did catch it but it's shorter that's okay it really is not going to matter if you if one seam allowance or if one fabric shifts a little bit like this but if it shifts so bad that it doesn't catch it you'll want to re-sew that seam allowance and you can take it in just a quarter inch on most it's not projects it's not going to matter but let's go to the sewing machine and let me show you what you can do have you ever seen this little gadget most likely it came with your sewing machine but i have to be honest it wasn't until a couple years ago that i even knew what this was and it really is the coolest little device and a tool that's in your toolbox of your sewing machine that really comes in handy for this purpose it's called a hump jumper it levels off that presser foot so you don't get those skip stitches i'm going to sew up to the edge of that thick part and stop and leave my needle down 
lift up my presser foot, insert that hump jumper like this, just to the up to the edge. See that hits that thick place. And it has two different widths. I'm going to only use that small one. Put your presser foot back down so you can see how that levels out that presser foot and it can sew straight. When the presser foot gets a little bit further, you can release that or else it will just fall out by itself. You want to remove your pins. So what if you don't have one of these little gadgets? You can make your own by just, this is a cereal box and I folded it like in four times to get that width and you can just use that to slide underneath that space. You see that? Put your presser foot down and it will do the same thing. Now some sewing machines are going to have a little rougher time sewing over thick things like that, but like I say, go slow and there aren't any skip stitches or any stitches bigger than the other, so it went over that nice and smooth. So there's the front side and this is the underside and you can see how that, it did challenge that seam allowance a little bit. See how much smaller that is than this? But it did catch it, so I'm not going to worry about it. If that was up here more, I would want to either unpick or just take that seam allowance right in that area a little bit wider to catch it. It's not going to fray, but make sure you, it's caught. Tip number eight is you don't have to press fleece. It's not going to, it's not going to even hold the, the pressing. What I encourage you to do if you need to open up a seam or something is just look how nice that finger presses and stays open like that. So you don't need to use an iron to open up the seams or to press things out. Tip number nine is when you sew with fleece, you are going to have a lot of lint. When even when you're cutting out and especially in your machines, you're going to have a lot of lint and it's important that you keep your machines clean. Just take your brush and brush it off. A lot of sewing machine repairmen don't advise blowing it can lodge the lint even worse in there. So just take your brush and make sure that it's cleaned out around where you can get to it. And eventually, you know, it is good to have your machine serviced once in a while and cleaned because lint does build up, especially using fleece and upcycled sweaters. So we're on tip number 10. I wanted to show you some ideas on, and tips on how to use fleece strips as binding. As you, you can see on this, pilot cap, which I have a pattern and tutorial for. I have used fleece as a binding. It stretches. It has a nice clean finish on both sides. And I have a tutorial showing you how to do that. And I'll put the link in the description below. This binding can be used on so many projects. As you can see, I've used it on this slipper pattern. I also have a pattern for this. This is a bowling slipper. I have other slippers, but it around the ankle, so cozy, stretches, has a really nice finish. Look at that on the inside. I'll show you how to do that in that tutorial and it is so easy to work with. So fleece, use fleece as a binding. I hope you enjoyed those tips. I hope it comes in helpful, makes your sewing with fleece a little easier. If you like these tips, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Click on that bell if you haven't already so you can be notified when I put new things up. I do have a new fleece pattern coming out that I think you really like. So stay tuned for that. Have a fabulous day. Get in your sewing room. Get out your fleece and make something fun. We'll see you next time. Shh.